Savage. Love Talk Radio. <laughs> Welcome back, fight fans, to the Two Minute Warning Pride Rules MMA podcast. We are on episode forty-five tonight. Jesus, guys, forty-five. Getting we're there, almost. Boy. We're we're almost at a year. We're a couple months away from a year. I'm, uh, this is amazing. I'm so excited. Um, we're we're on a new night tonight. Uh, just to let you know, we are brought to you by ADK Fightwear, uh, Black Hole Jiu Jitsu, Madama Jiu Jitsu, and Two Minute Warning. Um, we hope everybody had a great Labor Day weekend. You know, this is the time of the year. It's kind of depressing because the summer's over and, you know, now is the time of the year for the basic as fuck white girl to come out of the hole that they were hiding in all summer to put oh, on no. yoga pants, a sweatshirt, <laughs> some yeah, Ugg boots. Yo. Some Ugg there's something boots about, the there's sp- something about a hot chick in a Packer sweatshirt though. I don't know, man. Yeah, I can, I can like, get you know, that. now they, now they go to the store, they get the pumpkin spice douche or whatever the fuck it is. I mean, Whoa. I don't understand the, I don't understand the, <laughs> the pumpkin Yo, spice. Yo, if stuff, I go down I, there and it's pumpkin spice, I'm hitting the eject button. <laughs> I just, I just don't. I don't no. get the pumpkin craze. Uh, maybe it's because I don't like pumpkin pie. I mean, if you put he doesn't like pumpkins, totally, but he loves he likes flowers, guys. You're he right. Likes yes, that's right. He loves sunflowers. He loves sunflowers. You know what it is, so. man. He's, he you, loves you put you put pumpkin <laughs> pie in front of me. I'll throw it across the room. You you put cannoli cake and cupcakes and brownies in front of me, and I'm like Ezekiel Elliott at a fucking interactive. You put a flower in front of him, and he'll make you a bouquet. <laughs> He's yeah. Japanese. He's Japanese. He will make you okay. And um, no, I'm not hating on that, man. I feel you, Tommy. You got to do, you got to, you know, do your fatherly, husbandly duties. I understand. And if I had a girl, I'd probably be at the pumpkin patch in a month too. So, so well, great pumpkin. You know, I, I understand. Of, well, well, to to cut into what you were about to say, you know, this is another. Big day for everybody today because this is adult Christmas. Everybody's kids finally went back to school today. I mean, it's the most <laughs> wonderful time I of the year. I already know where he's going if you're with parent, <laughs> If you're a parent, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, our own host, Chris, has decided to go back to school. We're very <laughs> proud of you, Chris. You know, Omar, I'm super excited. You know, for, Omar, um, I was talking yeah. to Chris about this today privately. And, and, you know, I had said to him, I'm like, Chris, what <laughs> – <laughs> what made you decide to go back to college? You know, because there's only two other people that are older than him that were freshmen. You had Thornton Mellon when he went to college with his son. Jesus Christ. And the, Yo, I and can't the, even contain it. <laughs> and the star oh quarterback for the Texas State Fighting Armadillos, Paul Blake. <laughs> They're the only ones that were over 29 that decided to become freshmen. So I said, Chris, why did you want to go back to college? He said, well, the problem is being a bartender, you're always going to be around girls that are your age and they have kids and they have baggage. So now I can go back to the Wellspring. I can go where there is not. I can just not lie. Look. (laughs) uh, I can't say he's lying here. I mean, um, see? I have the fucking biggest, sh- I, and the thing is, I have such a shitty and grin on my face right now because it's funny, but it's so true. Like it really is. There's part, it's partially <laughs> you see true. What I mean? And yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, full disclosure here on Pride Rules After Dark Pillow Talk with Chris, ladies. Um, but no, honestly, I'll be in public. I'll be in public speaking in room one fourteen tomorrow. So if anybody wants to stop by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the reason why we had to have the show so late tonight is because Chris decided to drive a young lady home, but she wasn't old enough to drive the car without somebody who was older than 25 years old. So that's oh. why the show went so late tonight. <laughs> that's totally <laughs> Bro, <okay>. literally <laughs> totally candy okay. from a baby. That's, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm telling nah, you. dude, honestly, I, it's awesome. You, you know, you and Omar are back in school, and you guys are doing your thing. I, that, that's yeah, awesome. Man. yeah. The, uh, That's awesome. The show, the show inspired me. That's what I'm doing it for. 
That's, that's so phenomenal. Great. I'm excited. Well, that's a sad I'm excited fucking for you. statement considering the, some of the shit I mean, you say on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're missing the point entirely. I enjoy this a lot, so that's why I'm learning how to do it for real. You know, like, it doesn't even have to be this show. No offense. No, I'm kidding. Of course, loyalty is oh, everything. Damn. I would never fucking. Wow. I would never leave. The, I would never leave. The, the Pride Rules will have a thousand episodes, my friends. That That is a fact. Hashtag Michael Strahan. He's pull, he's gonna pull it and just not tell anybody and fucking ghost. Kelly Ripper's gonna be crying. <laughs> no no loyalty, like man. Kelly. Come on, oh, this shit's too fun. Ground floor shit here, man. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be able to. Nah, no, that. man, that's great. So pull, uh, Tommy's Tommy's gonna be our graphic far. designer soon. He's Tommy. Once he comes back home, we decided in the chat today that he's gonna become the uh, the resident graphic designer. He's gonna design all the um, hot pink fucking. Yoga pants, yeah. ladies. Sunflower style. He's got a lot of sunflower. <laughs> a lot of motifs. Sunflower with the three of our faces on them. That that that's what it's gonna be. I would rock it like that. That sounds like a t-shirt to me. I'm telling you. <laughs> it sounds like, it sounds like a wrestling shirt. But photoshopping. <laughs> we're gonna Photoshop a picture of Tommy with like a group of people. It could be like say like him and his team, <laughs> and we're gonna Photoshop a sunflower on everybody's fucking shoulders except his. He's just gonna be hanging out with a bunch of fucking. <laughs> Standing in the flower. <laughs> Indeed. All right. It's going to be fucking well, amazing. Uh-huh. Let's, let's jump right into our first topic here. Uh, Chris, I'm going to defer this question to Omar because we already know your feeling on this. And, you know, it's time we, we give Omar a chance to have the floor. So, Go there's ahead. been a lot. Have at it. So, so there, there's been another report coming out that the Golden Snitch was telling everybody not to panic. Uh, about the John Jones situation because, you know, one fight or one test came back positive, another t- test came back negative. Now, USADA has not been the type to backtrack on anything that they've ever tested. I mean, when you fail Chad Mendez for psoriasis cream and you still give him a suspension, but you're telling people not to worry about the John Jones suspension. Got to raise a little bit of questions. So, Omar, the floor is yours. What do you think is going on? And before you answer, I'm asking for a real answer, not your, uh, you know, uh, Rumble Johnson punched Andre Orlovsky's wife in the face yeah. answer. <laughs> no, like, uh, or, or, play, or playing both sides to the middle and just being safe. You know? Exactly. Well, what do you think I, is going on here? I think he's a dirty motherfucker. And I also yeah. think that you, you – Yeah, I really – I just flat out do – I think USADA is it's in it's in a weird spot right now. I don't you know what? I don't think we see USADA in the UFC um in like two, three years. I just don't think WME is gonna be putting up with all this ridiculousness. Number one. Number two, the fans are gonna be left with what why I mean, any any situation that leaves us having to watch Vitor Belfort and without <laughs> TRT fight is something that's just un-American. I flat out just I feel that deep down in my heart. Yeah, yeah, um, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. John, John Bones is, is dirty. Um, I think he got the one free pass that, that he was going to get from somehow from the bro, commission. Bro, he broke you know. free passes for his yeah. first, like, six or seven fights. Yeah, he he's, been, he's, he's <laughs> got that punch card for fuck-ups. You know what I mean? Uh, the 10th one, he's yeah. going to get a free trip to jail. But it's uh, right. it's one of those things where – you know, I think the fans are also turning on him for fuck's sake. Joe Rogan, yeah. who's not, he's not like, Yo, but you that know, doesn't, that's, that's, that's good business, bro. We all know that. The fans 100%. turn on you. That's good business. Well, and yeah, like, that's, but, why, like, that's why I argue who, that the UFC will always keep it. But, yo, Omar, let me ask you this. You think you saw this gone within a couple of years. The UFC will have a huge black eye if they get rid of, like, the governing body that oversees drugs in the UFC, steroids. Like, do you think that they'll just allow steroids again? Or no, do you think, I think they they're going to try to replace them? Out. The same way. Like, the, the way that they used yeah. to be and the way that Coker... You know, remember, uh, he, Coker did an interview, I want to say, on the Fighter and the Kid a little while ago, where he kind of tiptoed through that. And I was surprised that Brendan Traub came out and asked him, so what the fuck, man? You know, and he's like, well, you know, we, we, we leave it up to the commissions. The commissions have the say, and, and we work with the commissions, kind of passing the buck. And you know what? Yeah. That's how you get a Vanderlei Silva still able to stand and fight. That's how you get a Chael Sonnen still able to stand and fight. Possibly, God, you know, God might strike me dead, but that's how you get a Fedor Emelianenko still able to do it at all. Not maybe not yeah, well. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Right. But, but I mean I that. Think, I think they just offload it. And number one, I think they're number two. They're going to be gone 
they're going to be moving away for a while. I think they were moving towards that, that spot or that attempt at legitimacy as like the number five sport or the number six sport. I'm South American. So number five sport, fucking soccer, fuck you. But, um, uh, you know, the, one of the major mainstream sports, I think now with that, that financial noose around their neck and the new management, I think they really they take you know USADA slash Old Yeller out yeah. behind the woodshed and shoot it. I can't I can't see that happening because of I mean like I I see your side of it one hundred percent I really do because it's just not good business at times to lose yeah. these guys it's terrible for extended periods of time plus the, but, the injuries you know the injuries are yeah. probably as a result yeah. a little bit of not being but able it's to recover it's it's, it's a produce. combat sport so it's like pretty dangerous in that sense. But the football, NFL kind of lets it go, you know. And right. Like they, <laughs> we it's like well, very, okay, so very, no. very sketched out. But the NFL has got like you know crazy power with the financial clout that they bring to the table. You know, the, right, well, as rich out. as the so, UFC is, they don't have NFL money. Is that right? Absolutely. But w- w- Omar, you're saying you think UFC's gone within two to, or uh, USADA's gone within two to three years, which I, I don't disagree with. I just can't see it not they, being replaced with a different system. Well, you know, yeah, which is, is going to be I think they, if, <laughs> if John Jones gets off yeah, and yeah, somehow is, is okay, that. if he's somehow okay with this and he gets off, we'll I think it's it. a slap in the face to these guys who, like I had mentioned with Chad Mendes. Bro, if he, gets off, for if he gets off, you know, you know what it's going to tell me? The fact that he even tried it lets me know that – People are still juicing because he thought he could get away with it. That's why he did it. You and know, like so. There's a lot of other people that are still doing the same thing. And 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 the that John Jones is doing. Juicing. I hate to say that, but Jackson Wink starts getting the real the real skeptical look for me at this point in time. I hate to say it, but you know what? You you want to tell me that the one I don't hate to say guy, it, bro. I don't fucking right? trust any fucking camp. Absolutely. Like fuck that, bro. Like you know, you got. I'll even go as far as to say this which Tommy's going to fucking shit his pants. But, like, you've got guys like the Diaz brothers that are advocates hardcore against steroids, and the two of their boys are fucking gotten popped. You know what I mean? So, like, you yeah. can't trust anybody. It comes down to a person, more so than a camp, but I could see how it could be the camp because you don't know. Watch man. AKA be the how many... only camp that's clean, and that's why they're always injured. <laughs> yeah. Crazy Bob all injured. Be like, we're going to try we're going to try this stuff, you know, and then poor bastards dying by weight. But the, the fact is, too, you know, like sometimes a camp, it goes both ways. A camp can get a bad name because of three bad people that are that train for them. And you can't control Unless these the black they do at home. Who just suck. Yeah. Fuck but yeah, but you get what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like there's mm-hmm. some respectable mm-hmm. coaches out there that try and do it the right way. But I just think that these like super gyms, man, you know, these coaches that they really can't get too personal with any of these athletes because there's so many of them. You know, like you got four guys in the top ten in each division in some of these fucking camps. You know, it's crazy. Well, they're not they're not in the weight room with you know John Jones and stuff like that. When you know he he, I mean the yeah. guy bought Cialis from. You know, but I there's a fucking nutritionist a there. There's a strength yeah, and conditioning guy matter. there. All the all the nutritionist does is is he watches what John Jones eats. He doesn't. He doesn't know what John Jones is popping in his Bro, mouth. Bro, if there's know, not a guy that's like house. worried about the physiology of what's going on inside your body throughout a professional fight camp, then you're fucking doing it wrong. Like the nutritionist has to be on top of the supplements, on top of everything. You know what I mean? Like that's well, what, no, you see, that's no, what they're that's for. What, that's what USADA is for. You're supposed to send whatever supplements all you're taking to USADA. Yeah, that's but the ju- we, but your fucking nutritionist yeah, but- should decide which ones you're taking, basically, or at least can conf- you know can the the they should all get together. It should be like a you know you got to fucking work yeah, together on shit be, like that. But, you know, you're everybody also, should you're have knowledge writing- of everything that you're doing. Yeah, but dude, you're writing this on the back of a matchbook, like you know what I mean, like the the we are the world type shit. That that's that's not the way it fucking works. With these guys, they're all adults. They're not fucking high school kids. <laughs> you know, I would fucking slap you shit out of you, you motherfucker. I just pictured them. All <laughs> I'm just together. saying. Like, it took me a while to process that you were fucking <laughs> taking a shot at me, you motherfucker. <laughs> but that is funny. I'll give you that. Well played. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just saying. You know what it is? Is it's I love the way Rogan and Schaub kind of broke it down to where they were saying that it was probably a bad batch or whatever he took that stayed (laughs) in his system for as long as it did. Yeah. 
Yeah, Ted, yeah. Oh, I thought you were about to go somewhere else with that. I was like, wait, bad batch of some supplement. No, meaning like tainted. No, that that was just like the juice stood stayed in his system longer than he thought it was gonna. Simple. Well, because what he took is supposed to be out of your system. Yeah, for 24 exactly. Hours. Twelve, but if 12 to twenty four hours. If it's a, if it's a bad if it's a bad batch. You know, if the the chemicals weren't mixed right or whatever, if if something might have been left over residue wise, it's gonna and, stay in the system. Yo, and I don't, I don't know think, what like. Go ahead, finish. No, go ahead. Well, I, I don't know what Osada. I don't know what. I don't think he's, gonna clean, what, <laughs> don't think he's clean ever. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think he's been clean ever. I think he's been taking. I don't either. His entire career. That's what I, don't, I think. I don't. One hundred percent. I'm in conjunction with that thought. However, I don't think that USADA really has much of a stain in this situation. It's, it's, it's the jerk-off from the California Commission, man. Like, he came out and said they, – they, they never came out and said, like, you know, don't panic. You know, like, they straight up – you've popped. What I think USADA needs to do next is change that test time to fucking, you know, 12 hours. So people aren't going to take this supplement anymore, this this – steroid anymore because the, if John Jones tried it like I said everybody's trying to do this or is successfully doing this with the not tainted batches you know so if the drug is out there to be taken it's going to be taken so they have to take measures to prevent it from being taken and that would mean testing at a different time you know not waiting fucking uh till after the fight or well, I know they do one before I know they do one before the fight and they do one after. Yeah, they do one right before was, the fight, and they do one the next day after the fight. Right, but according to you know what what Shab was saying and, and Rogan was saying was this was a new test that they just decided to do, and John Jones just decided to be the one to get popped on it because it no, only it's shows not up that in they, the urine. It's probably it's probably not even a new test. It's probably a test that they put on guys that they don't trust or clean. You know what I mean? It, it's might, probably, be a, it might be a, a heightened protocol exactly for a man that they really feel. Is trying you know, and to I, gain and, and you could say all the things you want about like oh that's dis- that's discriminating or no it's not like yo like if somebody walks into a store and they fucking are known to steal shit from the store like you better fucking believe that the people that are own that store are gonna watch that person harder than the person that you know has no reputation of that it's just Did the way just the world works. Did you just go John Jones is black, Chris? That's kind of fucked up. I no, stop to... pulling. Oh, come on, we're not stop doing this again. Stop <laughs> race baiting me. Again. Jesus, we're not doing this again. But no, no, I get what Chris is saying. It's like it's like someone who gets busted for drugs and they're on probation. They get you know, they get tested yeah. once a month or All whatever. The time. It's, it's, they got to pee. They yeah, got to. Yeah, there's you know, nothing wrong off. with that. No, that's what it is. That. Like you, you, know you created that situation for yourself. So exactly. Fucking, now you exactly. get watched harder. That's simple. And like, what do you think? So, I'm a fucking Diaz brothers fucking fanatic, and like I've been dealing with this shit. And, like, you know, at least they're not doing PEDs yet. <laughs> you know, you never so know. So I know – well, I know we talked about this a little bit on the video. But if he does – if this all ends up being a suspension for him for three years, where does John Jones go? Omar, I'm going to give this one to you first. Ryzen, in a heartbeat, he says, fuck the commission. He makes enough money to be able to buy Johnny Cochran's, like, frozen skull – to then fight the suspension, gets it cut like Vanderlei does, and then comes back and probably headlines the biggest pay-per-view of all time under the UFC banner. Who knows? It might be under McGregor Promotions at that point. I don't know. But he goes out there. <laughs> Fuck it. But do you think he can ever be trusted again? That's what I'm no. asking. Do you think he no, can ever assume, be trusted? From now but, on, I'll just assume but, he's on juice. Same with Brock Lesnar. And, but you know what? I'll, at the, in the same breath, I'll not care. My, my biggest that concern commission... is, this, is that it's not a level playing field. If they're both, if, if I go into a fight with John Jones and, you know, we're both signing on the dotted line and I'm clean and he's not, that's ridiculous. But if I know he's going to be juiced to the test, then you better be rest assured that I'm calling every biochem <laughs> yeah. major that I have on Facebook. Anybody Victor has Conti will be in right. my corner. <laughs> like, no, that's what I'm saying. He'll be in my camp. Juice. Fuck yeah. But no, uh, do you think that if John Jones goes to fight for Japan, they they would just suspend his sus- suspension? They would just be like, all right, well, when you decide to come back, you're still suspended starting then. <laughs> like, well, right, I don't think they're going to let him. But, Chris, let me ask you something. If he could make more money in Ryzen, which Japan has always been known to What about pay. 1FC? Now, Nobody talks about that. What about there? 
they him versus one Ben Askren. Can't pay him. I need to they, see this. One FC, yeah, but one FC can't pay him. Like it would be. Well, that's a what struggle. I was asking because I don't know. Yeah, the, but, I don't know the economics of either well, organization. Talking, if well, I'm being honest. Talking to to who I have talked to about this, he was telling me that he wasn't really sure if Ryzen would be able to pay John Jones what you know John Jones is paid. And what I had said to him was, John Jones would triple Ryzen's revenue with just one fight, and then they'd be yeah, able to John pay Yeah, but John Jones him. becomes the joke at that point. He already is a big joke, but then he just becomes like the sideshow. You know, any chance becomes Bob Sapp's like, point out. I say these things like any chance at him becoming a this or a that, like like it's like those chances are are already gone. <laughs> like you know, yeah, like what am I thinking? Bad. Yeah, you know, like at the very worst, he can't do what he would have done, and that's sad. You know, like no matter what. You know, like, that's why I got to give respect to fucking guys like Connor who have the world. So far, you know, you don't know. These guys are still humans, so anybody could fuck up, you know. But shout yeah, out to the guys what? that according, don't. Yeah, but according to USADA's band list. Like the GSP. List, it's over, it's sure. over 200 banned substances where... It's not necessarily a performance enhancer. It's just something that's on their banned list. So do you think maybe they need to knock back that list to things that are more serious? Because no. I, I, and I, keep, it, if, I keep bringing it back, but I keep bringing it back to this with Chad Mendez because the guy has a fucking disease. He has psoriasis. He took medicine for his psoriasis and popped hot. Now, I'm not talking about a former guest that we had on who's a piece of shit whose fucking school is opening up fucking soon, and he's popped twice, and, you know, he popped for a fucking fertility drug, which you, you should know right off the bat that that's probably going to end up being a fucking banned substance. But I'm talking about for the Chad Mendez, is, you know, where it's, it's a fucking medicine, and you're banning him because he took medicine for a fucking skin disease. That's where I think Usada's is wrong. Yeah, I agree. but but in uh, Usada's defense, fucking Chad Mendes should have sent the cream to them, like you say about everything else. You know what I mean? Like if you're put on any medication, cream, fucking this or that, if you don't send it to them, that's on you. In my opinion, because the list is fucking clear as day. You can look at the list. You know what I mean? These fighters have access to the list. Do you know what you do? Look at the fucking list and then turn your fucking medication around and look at the back of that. Does anything match? Yes. Send it in. How about this? You send it in and let them look for you. They're not going to lie. You know, and if All they right, do, then wait, you're good. Time out. What if, what if they don't have a cream that doesn't have the banned substance in it? The guy's got a fucking disease, a skin yeah, disease. Yeah, but... But, yo, there's probably, Salt like, water you, bath. You, you, bro, That's you're it. a fighter, all right? You're a professional fighter. So I just, I can't, man. I'm sorry. You know the way the game works, you know? You've seen it's crazier hard things. hard for me to believe it with a cream. You I don't I mean? think, like, I think it sucks, and it's an example of, of where they might have a hole. But here, the, the, my answer to that hole is, well, you should have sent it in. You There'd know? be nothing because going in can't. my mouth. That well, I didn't clear with Usada or on my that. skin. Do, yeah. Simple. No, done. Anywhere. It's Especially my job. Especially if it's something for the skin, because I would already, I would automatically think like there's probably fucking hemp or, or like cannabis Steroids. in it. Because for psoriasis yeah, right. and shit like that, and yeah. like eczema, that's the best fucking medication for it. So the chances yeah, are sometimes it's in with, there. Yeah, but what I'm saying is sometimes with psoriasis, you have, you know, like cut open cuts and stuff like that, and you're rolling around on mats where, I mean, fucking bacteria just lives on the goddamn things. That's why people get mat aids of course. constantly. Of course. You know what I mean? So when it comes to a, a cream where they've tested it, okay, this is in it, but it's a fucking cream. It's not testosterone cream. You, you know what I mean? It's not testosterone shampoo. It's a fucking cream. That's bro, right. but here's the truth of it, bro. Of shit. Yo, and here, but here's where I'm going to say, you know, like I remember getting poison ivy when I was a child, and the doctor – saying to my mom, I'm going to prescribe him a steroid. <laughs> like, it was actually called a steroid, and it was a cream. You know what I mean? So, fuck, man. Like, 
You know, I thought – I actually was like, why am I taking steroids for poison ivy? I asked that question to my mother as Yeah, bro, a child. I, I've had to take And she was like, no, it's not like that. asthma attacks. I've had to take so steroids right away, for asthma attacks. But that's my you know point. What I mean? You know what I mean? Like, if it's called a fucking steroid, like, dude, that word alone should just be, like, enough. You know, like, I had a cream called a steroid before. If he's got psoriasis, the motherfucker knows, you know, he's probably – had yeah, but it's not an before. anabolic steroid. It's not an anabolic care. steroid. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't no, matter. You I'm know, just saying the right. word I, itself would be like, yo, I'm yes. sending it in. And I would tell my doctor, too. I'd be like, listen, I don't know if you know this. I, I know I'm two feet tall in Chad Manis' case. Uh, I'm two feet tall, but I'm actually a pro fighter. Um, please, you know, are, is there any possibility? I'd ask the doctor. I'd ask my doctor friends. I'd figure it out before doing anything. Yes. It's I agree, I mean. and like you know, I, I, I'm just saying like Chad Mendez is the fucking you know exception to the rule where he should have you know maybe beaten that, but and like in an appeal maybe he should have beaten that, you know. So that's where I'll say you're right, but I don't know that they hear the appeal. I think it's an, a, an outside fucking like hearing. It's I, don't I think, think it was a dumb actually... result. I agree with the dumb result, and I think I agree with both of you on, yeah. on that fact, right? The, the result But you have ended. to draw a line. You have to draw a line and mm-hmm. fucking stick to it. Otherwise, you have guys that are – because you always have that guy that's trying to fucking figure out a way to beat it. You know what I mean? And be and, like and dick pills. That's, yeah. Yeah. And be like, yeah, yeah, right. and be like oh, I needed I to get a heart on because I have a big fucking – you know, like – My cock had, uh, had some patches on <laughs> well, it. Well, I mean, what when you're, when you're buying a knockoff – when you're buying knockoff dick pills and you're a fucking millionaire, bro, that's his story. Is, I, I saw like, him at the. First of all, he hasn't told the truth the ever, and that's his story. Like, don't don't take everything else he said as bullshit, but say, take that one as truth because that's a lie too. He took steroids, bro. Like, it was yeah, no, but that yeah. just makes him even look more stupid. You're trying to exactly. tell me you're a professional fighter and you don't have medical coverage to where if you needed Cialis, because I'm pretty sure you can go to a doctor and say that you want Cialis and they're not going to fucking say, well, you know, you're only such and such an age. I can't prescribe you that. You know what I mean? So it's, that's what makes him look even more stupid, but for a fucking psoriasis cream, come on. That's where I think USADA is wrong with, with a lot of the shit that they're busting guys on. You know, it's it's the, their list is a little extensive, um, but like Omar says, I could see them gone in, in two to three years because they're kind of they're, they're, they're killing, they're killing the that pocket. I'll say Think this. I'll say this, and injury. we'll close out. I'll say this, and we could close out the fucking Usada, right? Give it for the all the Chad Mendezes for all the yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's definitely a fucking topic that needs to be discussed. But you know, we just we got other things. We got fucking <laughs> for all the Chad Mendez is there's fucking fifteen fucking dirty fighters that you saw that did the right thing with and got popped and the sport is being cleaned up as a result. Whether you look at that as a good or a bad thing is another story. I agree that there's both you know, that's up for debate as well. They maybe they should just let everyone be fucking dirty. But, you know, for the clean fighters I think it's only fair. You know, the guys that do it right deserve the shot. Um, and that's just my fucking opinion on Usada. Anything I don't think over they 180 go pounds, anything over 185 pounds, I think it's right when they're busting them for steroids, <laughs> just because you, you can kill somebody with one punch. You know, like yeah, a, but then, a, but a that's what I'm up. saying. Like you can't draw the line there, <laughs> 180. All right, because then you'd have a bunch of guys fucking just fighting heavy and juicing Yoked the out fuck, at 179. You know, like, you know, on Royce, but just super, super juiced. Just absolutely yeah. destroying people. Well, I mean, the being perfect like, example is Alistair Overeem. I mean, you remember when he fought Brock Lesnar the first time? I mean, oh, yo, did anybody see muscles. that? I want to bring that. I'll bring that up later. But there's there's news with Overeem. I don't know if you've seen his tweet. What the Ingana the whole, fight? No, the fucking Anthony Joshua. They, like supposedly the UFC's contacted Anthony Joshua about fighting Overeem in the UFC. Oh, my Lord. And wait I hate minute, to say it, but time I think Overeem would out. fuck him up, yo. Time like, out. Yeah. Time out. They're going to contact Anthony Joshua. They already fight did. Alistair Overeem. But they're not going to contact Anthony Joshua to fight the guy that's basically called him out on Twitter and said that he would beat him in Stipe Miocic. Well, I think the idea is to get somebody is to get, is to get the guy actually to do it, and I don't think he would come fight fucking Better mixed striking fucking... credentials, Alistair Overeem. 
I hate to say, it, I know he's your boy, Tommy, but I think we, we might lock horns on this. The K1 Grand Prix for mixed yeah, martial arts. Yeah, just because he's the champ. Yeah, that was, champ that was when he champ. was on steroids. That was That's fine. I don't think Anthony Joshua is coming to the UFC. Like, no, that's done. just Anthony, you know. I, I think it's no... fucking wolf tickets. Seriously. But Overeem wolf did tweet a, like a fucking mock poster of it or some shit. Well, yeah, if everybody had Dana a White, I think like this Tommy, is Dana White trying to. Mention. I think this is Dana yeah. trying to uh, playing off of it. Get yeah. trying to get back at the boxing world because Connor got TKO'd and you in know a fight what else, that Dana actually thought he would win. I know, and, and 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 like it's been fucking crickets in the fucking MMA news lately, man. So they're just trying to generate some buzz. Well, you know? so now we're gonna we're gonna spin off that, Chris. I I know you were uh, you were excited to talk about this topic with uh, Connor and Nate's fight agreement. So go ahead, brother, roll with it. Yeah, man. Uh, first of all, the terms. And I, I do air quotes when I say terms because I don't know what everybody made news about that. Like, did anybody ever think that they were going to have a third fight at 170? Or was it always 155? Like, Nate isn't a welterweight. It's, you know, it's that simple. He's fought a few times there, but he doesn't look good there. You know, he's way, he's just not strong enough. And, you know, all of his fights have been at 55. I can't see him coming back at, at 70. And he, I know he's bigger, but he's always been big like that. So but in terms, let's, let's take your 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 fandom out of it. Okay, take your fandom out of it. In what right. planet? What planet does Nate Diaz deserve a 155 title shot? Other than he'll bring in money. Other than that. All right, I'll give two. I'll give two reasons. Title shot? I'll give two reasons, and don't dare say other than the biggest reason why he deserves it, because that's the money fight, and that's what the UFC is all about. They're not making money fights across the board. They didn't make Nate Connor two <laughs> because they gave a fuck who deserves something. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna do what the they fuck they Nate want, Connor and I think that's been proven. Connor wanted it. They made Nate Connor two because he wanted it. And what do you think Connor wants now? What do you think Connor wants now? He wants to close that chapter. You got to fight him. They got to fight. You know, like there's questions around who won the second fight. And I love Connor, but you watch that fight and it's a fucking close fight. That's razor thin. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, you know, I, it's the one fight that I actually get to watch. That's a big, huge fight with no bias because like, I really love both fighters. So it's like, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm going to be fair about this one. I'm not, I'm like cringing and excited about each shot landed. But the other reason is, you know, who, how does a guy not deserve a title shot when he has a legitimate chance to win in the said fight? Like Nate has a legit shot to beat Connor at 55, you know, a legit shot. So if there's a chance that he comes away with the belt, a really good chance because he's beaten him before and he's taken him deep, deep waters in the second fight, how does he not deserve it? Based on what? Based on the fact that he because hasn't it's, fought it's, these fucking new come-ups? No, these guys ain't shit. Because it's, Damn. it's not right that you have Ferguson versus Kevin Lee for a paper title. Yo, but the title fight... You're it's not right that those two would, would only generate four. Kevin Lee don't invite. deserve shit, bro. It's no, he true. doesn't. But unfortunately, that's where we're at right now because for some reason, Khabib can't Belts make 155. Stop but, it. No, you're telling me but, you're telling me that if Kevin Lee beats Ferguson, he deserves the shot over Nate Diaz, a guy who beat Connor and has fucking thirty fights in the UFC. I don't care what you say his record is because a lot of those losses are close fights, biased or not. How about this? Take your hatred out of it, like you try to say, take your fandom out of it, and tell and me no that Nate didn't lose a, And yeah, <laughs> tell me <laughs> Nate didn't lose a lot of really yeah. close decisions that you say, all right, he yeah, but you I'm know, not he did well. Talking about that, I'm not talking about that. Connor why are you making them. these? Why are you making these guys fight for a paper title if neither one of them is getting you hope the one title of them loses shot? And you don't have to the pay champion. them as much, Tommy. That's what it is, bro. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, Tommy. So Tommy, here's Ferguson what's got to happen. Here's what's going to have to happen with the fans and the fickle. Like, not saying it's fickle. There, there is a point to be made for everything you're saying, but the acceptance of the fact that they don't care about what you think or what 
fucking the ratings, the rankings say, or anything. They care about money, and that's what you have to look at first when you're deciding who deserves what and who's going to get what, because that's how it works. And everybody gets so bent about when it doesn't go the way it should go. You know what I mean? But that's just the way it's always been working, and it's it's going to get worse, if anything, because now they got to fucking, like you guys say, this crazy debt that they got to make up. So once you could, like, actually let go of the fact that, you know, the, it's not fair, <laughs> just say, all right, it's not fair. I get it. You know what I mean? You'll start – it's it's just easier to accept. You don't get bent about it. I accept right, the fact. <laughs> he, here's my thought process on this. No, but I'm just saying, here's, here's my thought process on this, okay? Do you do you hear what I'm saying, Omar? I mean, there's just no, truth I, to what I'm no, saying. Listen, I, 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 you are 100% right, but listen to my point here, okay? Ferguson's going to beat Kevin Lee, 100%, okay? Let's just say – Nate ends up beating Connor. A thousand yo, percent. I want to take that percent. action, actually. Will you give me a thousand okay. to one odds? Let's just no, say a thousand Nate percent is Connor. like maybe ten to one odds. Yeah. Let's true, just true, say true. Nate beats Connor. Nobody fucking gives a shit about Nate Diaz versus Tony Ferguson. And no, I won't everybody give you 10 to one odds. <laughs> Everybody wants to see want to Connor that. versus Kevin Ferguson because those two have been going at it for years Tony now. Ferguson, they have the yes, same right. management. Yes, Tony Ferguson. They've Did been going at it for years now. They have. I, I said Kevin Ferguson. Oh, sorry. I was thinking <laughs> of fucking Kimbo. Yo, yo, Kimbo. leave Kimbo Slice alone. What the fuck? Yo, yo right. to the gods. They have the, Rest they have mind, the, body, same, they have the same management beard. team. You know what I mean? So that's the fight that everybody wants to see. Nobody wants to see if Nate beats Connor and who is Ferguson their management beats Kevin team? What, what, Nobody... manage, what management team is it again? Paradigm. I know. I was just They're giving them under the Paradigm. shout out. So I was Paradigm. giving them. I was giving the shout. shout out I was, that was my. That was my way of shouting them out. Love Come Paradigm. On, Yo, but yeah, awesome. so that's the fight that everybody wants to see. That is the money fight. Yo, if when 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 Nate. And when Connor eventually fight, Nate might they might put something in his drink. I'm telling you guys, the WME doesn't give a shit about anything except having to pay off his Wait, fucking Wait, so Panama debt. Lewis is coming to MMA now? Is that you what you're saying? Right. You know what? The Margarito might be the one wrapping my man Connor's hands at this point. Like this, no, they're gonna try to drag out this cash cow that they have right now, because right now the 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 very survival, I believe of the company depends on how they leverage or how they navigate what they have on their hands with Conor McGregor, because he's a double-edged sword. Yeah. At this point, yeah, the, man. The, the, the stuff doesn't matter, man. The belts have, have stopped mattering bro for a while at this point. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And that's, it doesn't even make me sad. Like I don't care. That's I what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, it's weird because I consider myself like, you know, not the casual fan. <laughs> it's but, for the fighter, man. It's not for the shit? fan. It's for the fighter. Exactly. You know, you like know? it's more money, it's more endorsements. But like, I don't. I just want to see the best fight, the best. And fuck about. But yeah. you know what I hate? They should be able to dictate whatever fight they want to be a five round fight. Like, there's no way that certain like Lawler and fucking Cerrone or whoever get fight three rounds. Like that shit's crazy to me. Like those guys are nice. fucking championship fighters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that two should more be a five round fight. Imagine two more rounds on that fight. It, uh, it, the three Take a fucking bum ass mind. fight off the undercard and put, yeah. you know, Seriously. put it on fight pass and fucking Make let me Stephen see two more rounds. Retire, so basically, no wait, and time out. Time. So basically, what you're Fuck. saying is Robbie Lawler and Cowboy Cerrone should have headlined a fight night. No, no, I'm just saying that, like, if they want to make these Why? big super cards. But wait, yeah, but no, dude, no, I'm saying that something. I'm saying even go beyond that. Even if you stick them, however you want to arrange this little paper mache dance that you call these fight night cards, you just make whatever fucking fights you think merit the five rounds, the five round fights, pay them a little bit extra. Like, like Chris said, fuck some of these other ridiculous, like stay busy fights. I love these up and comers, but the UFC is is reaching kind of like mass saturation point. They don't know what the fuck to do with their talent, but yet they're going to just give us three rounds of of a of a absolute banger. Imagine if they had done did they do no, they didn't because I don't think they had the five rounds for Remember Forrest and, and Stefan? Was that a five rounder? 
Or was that a three round? No, no that was three rounds. It, was three it should rounds. have been a five three rounder. Rounds. Imagine if Yo, they had like, given us two more rounds of that. Uh, I agree 100% that, that these fights, you know, that's a good topic, actually. Like, you know, <laughs> having like a fucking yeah, I but they want can't to fight mix and match sometimes, man. Like, they can't they can't mix and match like on one card, like one fight be three rounds, one fight be five. This yeah, one's what? Three. What, what do you mean? Fighters it's, beforehand, it's as easy as right? It's as easy as actually just doing it and like saying like this is a five round fucking contest. Yeah, you know, where there's they, paperwork. Where they I'm sure that there's paperwork involved. Of course there is. It's probably of course not there that is. easy. That's when you get two guys to sign a bout agreement, that's when it gets discussed between the that's two exactly. fighters. Exactly. If they agree to yeah, five so rounds, that's, you, that's, you know, five make them headline, yeah, that's when you make them headline a Fox card. No. Okay? If you don't want to do fight night, then you, you're telling me you wouldn't be excited Tommy, for a Robbie Tommy, Lawler versus, you had you versus a Cowboy Cerrone Fox card? I, yeah, I don't we're, – we're, you know what? We're, Chris and I are firmly on the more exciting fights, longer exciting fights, and I think Tommy's like – Tom, Tommy, like, it's right called now, a Tommy. co-main. Like, what if there's one championship fight main eventing, right? Like, let's say, let's say Mighty Mouse and Ray Borg, let's just say. Now, say there wasn't a Shevchenko <laughs> fucking um, Nunez, Nunez right. fight on that yeah. card, and the next best fight on it was co-maining. You think it should They're be a They're not going to do fight? it that way, though. They're not going to do it that way. They, or do they, or do they allow co-main events to be five rounds, even if it's not a championship fight? I because then that's the just a loophole. And main so they should just have co, co-main events. I'm pretty sure the co-main and main event can be five rounds. So then, what you're saying is it's doable, just in any other fight, because they do it for that. Yeah, but you're talking about. Cowboy Cerrone and fucking Robbie Lawler on the card that they were on. Where and you don't want to know why it's not happening, Tommy? Because it costs more money. They can get the same two guys to fight a three-round fight. They don't give a fuck about who would have won if they fought two more rounds or the fans getting robbed because the fans are still getting to watch the fight, you know? And, you know, they'll say, oh, I wish it went two more rounds, but they still got what they fucking got. You yeah, know? But the fans got robbed in that fight. The fans got I, robbed I don't in agree. that fight. I don't agree. I think Waller won. I think we got robbed of two rounds. That's for sure. You know, yeah. whether so the you want to got two robbed. more rounds of that would have been fine. And you know what? Call it whatever the fuck you want. But I, I, I just want the UFC is in this weird like half and half position where they're trying to be like kind of on Tommy's side with like we have rules, we have paperwork, we have uh, you know legalities, this, that, and the third. It's and all then, fucking. And then it's all about the hurdles that are side. easily, it's just, it's just easily jumped over. Sense. This is no, another one not. of those things where you're writing it on the back of a matchbook. We are the world. Everything is perfect. Oh, my this God, bro. No, go. I'm not. This is something no. that, like, you – here's what gets I'm me George about Michael, you. I'm George Michael, by like the you, way, and the we are the world. Yeah, you know, here's what gets me is that, like, you are, like, so – you want the right thing in, like, a lot of other aspects, but you don't see this as, like – being a right thing because of paperwork and like no, I understand that the so reasons are the reasons are just re- the, the reasons are excuses. Make every that fight you're saying. five no. rounds. Then. No, because if it's going to be yes. if it looks like it's going to be a boring fight, I don't want to see a five round fight. There's some co- there's some headliners and co and co mains that have been five rounders that I've just been like you know what these are two extra rounds. Like I, I've looked at it and I'm like three of five. I'm like fuck. I got two more rounds. Of yeah, this but garbage, like, if you have like an MSG card, if you have an MSG card, and like Jose Aldo is fighting fucking Edgar, and it's non-title fight, and it's the fucking second fight of the night, you're telling me that those guys shouldn't fight five rounds, or even no, because they wouldn't be that low on the card. Yes, they it's would, like bro. How could you tell me? Like, look at the fucking card when it was um, Alvarez, Connor, and Woodley and Thompson as the as the headlines. Any f- other fight on there could have main evented any other card, all right? But they fucking didn't, you know. Like they were the first fight of the night, kicking off the fight. Who was it? I can't even remember, but I guarantee you that fucking it was a good fight. I know Misha fought. Um, didn't Misha fight on that card? Oh, Joanna. Joanna fought, um, Joanna fought. the other Polish girl. Carolina. Carolina. Oof. Yeah. Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Carolina, if you're listening, I'll be in public speaking tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause she, she's going to be in fucking Edison, New Jersey. I don't think she can mm. legally drive a car by herself, too. So I think I think Chris has got a nice setup. Yeah, she's, got she's, a, right, a she's right in the wheelhouse. Right there you there. Go. She's right in your wheelhouse, bro. Yeah. I, I don't know. Hit him in the wheelhouse. It's just, 
And the bread well, I, we kind of skated off the the topic that we were. Talking I I agree, about here. but it was we we got some good stuff in there, I believe. But yeah, but we didn't um, talk we, about what Nate thinks he deserves money wise, which I and like. How could you think hysterical. otherwise, bro? I think it's Tom, low. Tommy. I think it's, it's low. Low balling himself. Yeah. Because the UFC is going to make such a shit ton of money. You could yeah. tell me this right now, and I'll you know if you could name a fight with any two guys on the UFC that are actually able to fight each other. That's gonna make more money than Connor Nate three. I'll I'll do you name it I'll do it. He's gonna say Frankie can't. Edgar versus somebody, and, and no, I it's not a money. Time. It's just and it's not true, and he knows it. All right, you can't. Frankie versus so, Connor would make more than those two. You're okay, out I, of your I fucking gave him the ammunition. mind. I kind of you're out but... of your mind. You don't really think. No, that. I'm not. And if you, sure I do. You think. <laughs> I can't believe what you just said. I cannot believe what you just said. Because it's true. Uh, You're telling me that Frankie and Connor is selling more pay-per-views than Nate Connor 3? That's what you're telling me. That's now, the money maybe, fight. Yeah. On the East Coast, maybe. I can see that, but maybe, you know, no, as you cross. I think it would be a five-round fucking beating on Connor's back. I think that, I think that Nate has I would many loyal many fans, many as many loyal fans in any, first of all, the, the Diaz fan base is fucking huge. It really is. Everybody really loves is. the retards. Oh, God. Wow. Wow, man. Tommy. I'm, yo. Take it back. Yo, come on. Tommy, take it back. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just don't think Nate Diaz is a twenty million dollar fighter. I don't. don't it doesn't matter whether you think it or not. What is going to make the UFC the most money? He's in that position. He deserves it. If you're in the position to Connor, make the money aside for the guy, fighting, and you know it, if Nate Nick says Connor, I'm not fighting him, fuck you. I want twenty mil. The UFC's ponying up that twenty mil. Best but he said aside from his win he with Connor, 30. name me Nate Diaz's biggest win up until that point. Bro, I don't even give a fuck if you say Melvin Gillard. He beat Connor. He got the Connor fight. You know what the fuck? What's Justin Gaethje's biggest win? He's fighting a fucking a guy one one fight removed from a fucking he's, ass he's fighting in a title fight. He's fighting that CT. You know, but he just beat Michael Johnson, and he's fucking, you know, like, who who in the UFC lightweight division has big wins right now? You know, Nate's been fighting forever. He gets the fucking G-pass. I don't give a fuck what you say. It's like the He fights thing forever, like, but he's not a fucking, he's a 500 fighter. He's a 500 fighter. A 500 fighter does not deserve $20 You don't million. actually believe that he's a 500 fighter because it's not true. That's true. Sakuraba I do. for a while there was a 500 fighter, and I think he still deserved $20 million whenever he fought. Bro, and, like, he and, like, honestly, Nate's been fighting in the top ten of the UFC for about a decade, right? Maybe more. And Frank so has like, been in the top three for about a decade, so what's your point? And he was and okay. he's on That's my point. He That's my point exactly. That's my point exactly. You know, like, these guys have, like, the, you know, like, they're entrenched. You know, I don't give a fuck what, you look at the rankings over a fucking decade, and there's, a, there's like, one name that's been in it the entire time, and it's his. Whether it be seventh, fifth, he was always capable of beating all those top guys in any given night. And that's the fucking truth, and you know it whether he's lost or he not. Could, he like, couldn't win a belt. When he was fighting Gray Maynard, when he was fighting Gray Maynard, and Gray oh, Maynard was that Gray high Maynard. on the list, first of all, he beat his ass. Every time they fought, he lost. A, he got robbed in that decision, the first one, and then so fucking Clay absolutely Guido, point? And murked Hall, him the in the second Which fight. Point? But that's the type of point. Which point? My Which point, point is that all Which these point? guys that have come and gone, they're gone. Nate's still there. Nate's still a name. Nate's still fucking, you know, to beat these guys. He still could compete. All the guys that came up with him can't. They're all out of the sport or in a fucking no-name organization in the lightweight division. Name yeah, them. I remember. You know, I remember Nate. Nate's one title fight against Benson Henderson, and okay. he spent more Where's time he? putting the middle finger up than he did trying to win the fight. Yeah, and Benson Henderson's getting and fucking remember. Benson Henderson's getting uh, suplexed in Bellator right now, and Nate is about okay, to fight. Okay, so what does that mean? Still getting suplexed. What does that mean about Nate? I'd like to say he still is. Uh, what does it say about Nate? Bellator. It's saying that it's saying that he's been a fucking 
a top three fighter, top five it's fighter, arguably that you're a Nate for a Diaz decade. Lover and that you'll see, you would no, say it's Nate saying Diaz that, would be it's saying that, Forget that, bro. Like, right forget sake. that. You know I'm a fucking fan. All right. So you, but don't play on that with this because you can't say whether you dislike him or not, whether you dislike Connor. You have to admit there's talent there. These guys aren't just fucking pussies out there. Like they're fucking. You know they they at least Who back it pussy? up with fucking. Who said pussy? All I'm saying is he doesn't deserve a 155 title shot. He has a win over the current champion. I don't care. He it's beat over. him in a fight ago and almost beat him if did it, if he didn't beat him in his last fight. But right. he and, didn't. But he didn't. Oh. <laughs> oh, but, but that's but, it. But to have him fight at 155, it's the one. It's okay. The narrative you know what? You're right, Tommy. Time. You're right, Tommy. Let's go by the rankings. Who deserves the fight? Our time. Whose life is Conor going to change? Unfortunately, it's, it's either it's it, it, Kevin Lee's thrown in the fucking mix, which I don't understand. It, it so you can't even Ferguson say with legitimacy. Khabib. You can't even say with legitimacy that the guys that are fighting for the supposed chance at Connor deserve the chance either. So, so Nate gets to that like, in the process of elimination. No, Nate gets to that of dollar signs. Process of elimination. Process of elimination. No, it's, it, there's a he reason behind it. There's a reason behind it, and it's not only that. Forget everything else. It's Connor's biggest threat at the same yeah. time, and, we'll, and that's and when we why close it'll make the show so much tonight, money. When we close the show tonight with the topic that I have for the, you know, what, what the UFC wants to make money with, this makes your Trisha quote whole this. argument. Nate Diaz, your whole make argument the most money, shit. and he is one hundred percent Connor's biggest threat. Two so let's just say at one fifty five, Connor ends up fucking mopping the floor with him. Let's just say it. Is he fucking worth it then? No. Wait, I don't he? think he's worth it now. Yes, you want to know why? Because the fucking hundreds of millions of dollars and millions of pay-per-views that were sold will have been sold already. So, yes, he will have been worth it because his job will have been done. All right? And he'll go out there and he'll try and he'll put gross. on a fucking show. Even it's if he gross. gets the floor mop with him, it's gross. Which you don't even believe would happen. It's gr- it, you, hold on. It's gross? You don't even what, believe that. What, what I don't understand is what's gross about this. He's going to sell... The most Everything I'm saying is right, and you know it. It's, 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 he's because it's one You're... fight. It's not doing anything else. It's that's one all WME fight. gives a shit about right now, Tommy. Yo, I hate, but I hate Tommy, to the guys, up, but like that's all they give a shit about right now is the next I'll, fight. I'll, is, I'll, is I'll even do you one better. Fight. I'll even do you one better, Tommy. Right? You know what they do? Was it worth it? Yes, the money will have been made. And you know what happens next? What you're saying should happen now. It's not going anywhere. Like the Fergusons, the Kevin Lees, the Gaethje's, the fucking Edgars, the Maxes, they're all going to be there still. So if Connor wipes the floor with Diaz, then you know what you got? An even bigger star in Connor because he just beat the guy that had, you know, the trilogy with and mopped the floor with him in the third one, ended all doubt, right? And now it's a win-win for them. And then the fight that you want so anyway why, is still there. Why so it's business, bro. Ferguson versus Lee for an interim title shot. I'll tell you why. Because when you add a title to it, maybe not you, or maybe not me, or it's maybe an immediate not, boost. It's an immediate it's boost. It's an immediate to boost to, to how much uh-huh. they could fucking make off the fight. Was, she, I don't think sale. anymore. I think it everybody's... Yo, but you're not, not thinking for the... You're, you're not thinking that... that Tommy, for every fucking smart person, there's a hundred dumb people. I'm sorry, yeah. people, but... It's the truth. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, look around speak you. It. Speak it. Please speak it. Next yeah, time you're in a fucking room full of people, look around you and be like, I wonder how many people in this room are actually smarter than me. Like, not smart, like, get an A on a test. Like, actually, like, could critically think in, like, a normal situation. And it's fucking – or, like, I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> like, because I'm going to be so cynical about, like, the human it's, race. <laughs> it's like, great. His first day in college, but like, too. And he just, we'll like, talk like religion. We'll talk fucking, ridiculous. you know, con, you know so people basically, contradict basically every major belief they have is, on a daily basis. No, what you're saying is if you put something shiny in the mix, it's going to make more money. 100%. Yes, because people are fucking dumb. And they will just yeah, follow. Retards. There's so many casual fans that just see, oh, for the title. And, like, how else are you going to get people excited about that fight? <laughs> like you better attach Connor's name to it and say press like conference. you know winner gets Connor because nobody gives a fuck otherwise. Another How would you say winner simple. gets Connor if he's fighting Nate? <laughs> the winner because gets nobody. The winner gets the winner of Connor Nate. 
Yeah, that's it. That's not the fight people want to see, though. Nobody wants Which, to see. Let's just say Nate on. beats him. Nobody wants to see Kevin Ferguson versus Nate Diaz. You know what? You know what? Kevin Ferguson wants to see. You know what? wants to see. You know what? Kevin Ferguson is paid, dead, Tommy. A paid a paid sign next to that next monthly payment. Stop that's saying all this fucking Ferguson company gives a shit about. I don't know why That's I keep it. saying Kevin Ferguson. I don't know why. Like, yeah, you know, it's I it's so funny. Yo, it's amazing, <laughs> though. It's fucking, yo, Kimbo Slice is like, yo, why are you not putting respect on my name? Yo, he <laughs> is fucking, he is with us in spirit tonight. He is. R.I.P. But, yeah, like, oh, nobody yeah. wants to see Tony bread. Ferguson and Nate Diaz. Because I think Kim Tony Ferguson be- beats Nate Diaz in five rounds easy. Get him, Bert. Yo, you what you just saying? I'm sorry, I was having fun with Kimbo on the, on the line. I said I think Tony Ferguson beats Nate Diaz in a five round fight easy. But what I want to know, Tommy, <laughs> is what do you think Kevin Ferguson will do in a in a Where three round Nate battle? Where is he? Uh, against Nate Diaz? Oh, uh, I don't know because I mean it was hard for him to stuff the takedown with his bad knees. But I, if he connected with a punch, I think Nate. You know, would go to sleep since Josh Thompson, you know, kicked him. Yo, in just face admit it. You know, Nate would have his back in fucking one second flat and choke him out. You know that. Well, maybe the fight's Brendan Shaw versus Nate Diaz. Maybe that's the That's like saying who would win, uh, Prime Hoist Gracie or, or Kimbo. It's like a joke. Come on. You know, Jiu Jitsu's winning it all day against that guy. Stop. Prime Hoist? You never know. I agree. What? You never know? Tommy, what, did you take crazy pills today? <laughs> the fuck? Yo. No, no. He's not, Yo he's Tommy, not Tommy, I, go I, sit I in the took, corner I, and take your headset off. You're on suspension. I took anti-Nate Diaz pills today because I, I think it's fucking ridiculous that he, he gets a hundred. I'm surprised Jensi hasn't title called shot. in to fucking get in my ass about this, but she knows what's up. Even she knows what's up. Yeah, you gotta know what's up. Nate Diaz doesn't deserve a shot, but whatever. Uh, Look, <laughs> this deserve, this word deserve. Like, where, where, where are we at with this? You know what warrants the deserving of the shot is the fact that, like, did Floyd deserve a shot at? Uh, did Connor deserve a shot at Floyd? Forty nine and no. record. No, but, he makes but money. you know why he deserved it? Like, because he's making the most money out of anyone out there. Hundred percent for both guys. Like the Ooh, same gross. goes for Nate. And, like, it's gross, gross, but it's just accept it and stop being bitter about it because it's the way it is. Nope. That's just it. Nope. And it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. <laughs> nope. So just, no. He just says no. He just sitting there but, fucking... you, but, like, I still cling Wrong. to the fact that – I still cling to the fact that, that Nate actually deserves it for other reasons, too. And it's not just me being a fanboy. It's because he's his biggest threat. If you don't think that – whether you think Ferguson beats Nate or not, Ferguson isn't as big of a threat to Connor as Nate is. Because MMA math doesn't always add up, and I don't think. Hey you Omar, are you me... ready to fall over? You ready to fall over, Omar? And I'm sure I've, Chris I've, is going to fall over here too. I've been ready? falling over, but okay. At 155, I think Connor actually finishes Nate at 155. Holy shit! Did... Wow! Wow! The zombie gets finished. All of a sudden at 55. Never been finished at 55 besides once when he got fucking literally hit with a baseball bat eight times in his face. Jesus Christ. Okay, so was he finished at 55? And honestly, they, he didn't even really get no, knocked no, 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 out. No, no, no. I just asked TKO'd you a question. Him. Was he finished at 55? Was he what did I just say? I, I didn't, I'm just saying, like, I don't believe that Nate's getting finished by anybody anymore. Until I see it, I think like, I couldn't believe it that night. I think he finishes him at fifty-five, and you know me. Well, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't Connor be surprised because Connor is a I fucking superstar, and I believe in Connor's fucking abilities just as much as I believe in Nate's. But I'm just, I'm not arguing who was going to win the fight or who would win what. Fine, that's it for another day because that day will come because they're going to fight. So we'll have that talk. Believe me. Uh, All right. I'm saying so Nate let's, deserves let's, it. Let's, let's and I'm, I challenge right you. I challenge you to tell me where, not Kevin Ferguson. I challenge you to tell me where Tony <laughs> Ferguson is going to be. <laughs> where, what phase of the game is he better than him at? Just he's. He'll just out point. You know. Him. But in what? He's going to what? Leg kick him. He's going to work the Darts leg because that's his best shot. Best shot because he's not going to outbox. Him. I just think he. I just think he's too unorthodox for him. That's. that's what I'll, it is. I'll give I you that. That was, I was hoping you would say. I was hoping you were you were going to say he's awkward and that would give Nate problems because that's his own. That's like the only thing I could say is like he's tough and he's awkward. You know. He's more Mexican. Well, that's why he's on what a fight win streak. I mean, that, 
it's worked for him. Yeah, you know, so far but he has not <laughs> fought. He has he fought a guy as good as as good as Nate. Maybe you could say Dos Anjos, but Dos Anjos I don't think was right in that fight. He was off the sauce. So that's I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll eventually find out. But let's just spin off this because we took a lot of time on this one. And uh, we'll talk about uh, Chris Weidman's been hinting at the, uh, the jump up to 205. Chris, I'm going to spin this one off to you. What are your thoughts on Weidman at 205? I, I think that maybe you came at me because you thought that I would, you know, be disrespectful. bash Weidman and be 100%. disrespectful towards it. No, which I no, honestly, no, I went to no, I went I to think, Omar, and now I'm I went to Omar twice, and I'm giving this one to you. I think that, I think that, Weidman has a better chance at 205 now that John Jones is gone. Truthfully, I don't think he would beat Cormier, but I think Weidman's cutting too much weight at, to get to 85 anyway. You know, I think he's had problems there, and that might be why he's struggling a little bit. But that's a big jump, you know. It's twenty pounds, man. That's the fucking. Well, dude, he walks around. He walks around at like two twenty. I know, I've but that's what I'm saying. Camp. He walks around at two twenty. He's um, a big guy, and he looks unhealthy at fucking one eighty five. And there's you know, some you were saying you, you were saying that you don't think he could. I think he would give DC fits on the feet. At two hundred five. Yeah, but I, just, people... I don't see, I don't see DC not being able to just push him up against the cage and controlling the like the posture and and winning the fight that way because he I seen him do it with the good wrestling heavyweights. Well, yeah, but the difference is Weidman's actually really good on the feet. I mean, you talk about a guy who you know, well, I don't know what your thoughts on Mark Henry are, but of course you know, I he, like you know, uh, I'm not blind. You know, he works with Mark Henry a lot. I, I think his movement would be a lot better at 205. I think he beats Gustafson easy. I don't know why everybody's so fucking high on Gustafson. Why? Because he beat fucking Glover Teixeira? Gustafson is fucking... Because <laughs> is is he, he took John Jones one to of the best. Crazy he's one of the war. best at that weight. And, like, honestly, yeah. I got to see. Weidman, I'm, I'm on the fence about that. But Gustafson's a big guy, man. Weidman hasn't fought guys that size. You know, Gustafson's a big, long guy. Well, Weidman's not fucking small. <laughs> the guy's got to be at least 6'3", six, 6'4". Yo, six, but four. I'm just saying, like, until I see it, you know, like, I can't picture Weidman standing in there with a rumble. <laughs> you know, like, these guys have fought bigger, you know, like, it's just like a... Think about that. You know, like, Weidman rumble. Who do you got? <laughs> you know, like, that's going to be a tough one to fucking eat. Weidman beats him with his wrestling, because... Rumble can't wrestle for shit, obviously. Yeah, but you're talking about Rumble against Cormier. Rumble, I'm sure, you know, like, I don't think Cormier, I don't think Wyman's as strong as Cormier, as strong as Wyman is. But I could be wrong, you know, like, I haven't seen him at 205, so I look at him as naturally Weidman's smaller. Wyman's faster. Wyman is a lot faster than, than people think that he is, um, especially with his shot. You know, he, he could shoot for the takedown, you know, easy. Do, do I think he would beat John Jones? No, I don't think Jones would finish him. I think he would do better with John Jones than DC did the first time. But I, I don't think he would beat John Jones. But at two oh five, I think Wyman well, would have a good have thing pretty because J- Jones is gone. So, <laughs> like, well, yeah, <laughs> for the next three yeah. years. <laughs> uh, how about this? I think that right now, you know what it is with Wyman. I'll give you what I think about it. I think he'll actually be like in the same spot in light heavyweight that he would be if he stayed at middleweight in terms of where he ranked. Like the light heavyweight division, he would have a better shot because he would be at a higher weight and he's more healthy and because it's really shallow, man. Like outside of the couple guys we named, I think he dusts everybody. I mean, I still think – at middleweight, he could beat Luke Rockhold because he was winning that like he fight. Bust, he bust Glover to share his ass, I think. You know, so, like, right there, you put him above that, in my opinion. Well, so I, he's I've automatically seen... in the top four. He's and beating Omar, Shogun's you, ass. And, Omar, you could jump in on this. Cause that, and that's just what I was going to say, Chris. A lot of people are saying put him in there against Shogun. I mean, it, would that, that would even be a perfect be first fair? fight of the division. And I'd, I'd like to see but, him knock the shit out of Vulcan Ozdemir so we can all just... Put the you know, big yes. Yes. to bed. Yes, please. 
Like, fuck, man. Please. You know or, what I mean? Or they would never do that because they're trying to build guys, not take them down. So if Wyman moved up, they would. Ha- I, I guarantee you the fight would be Glover. Or it would be like, you know, because loser Glover's like a, the gatekeeper. Or All right, like but a wait a minute. Leaves town. Shogun would actually be the fight. You're right. 100% I agree with that because Glover's more dangerous right, than so Shogun. Just, They're not going right. to try and have Wyman lose right away. All right, Glover so, so I'm in there fight. with you. I'm, I'm in lockstep with you with that. But with a lot of people's ridiculous arguments saying that, you know, oh, they just give Weidman these old guys. Do you think that's fair for his legacy if his first fight at 205 is against Shogun, who's, I mean, bro, he's Shogun's pretty much a done. fucking legend, bro. He's pretty much done, but he's ranked fifth. <laughs> like, you know, who are they going to give him? St. Pru? Maybe. All right, that's better. Maybe he would fucking kick the well, shit out of him. Well, St. did so. fight for did did fight John Jones. I mean, Manoa. Yeah, but, you know, like uh, Manoa. Manoa gets eaten up, bro, by Wyman. And and he's not old, so that serves both of our purposes. But Manoa, I yeah, think, I, is I, in a position now to fight somebody different. Like, I don't think that that's the fight. I think Manoa is actually ranked too high for for Wyman right now. Just by you know, like he's. Weidman's not going in there to make a ton of money for you right away. You know, he's got to beat a couple guys. And I think that they're going to play it a That's little safer. That's why I don't think the Shogun fight and would be smart, because nobody's going to give a shit. Honestly. Yeah, but it doesn't nobody's matter. Gonna give it's a like, shit. nobody's going to give a shit, but it's still a win. It's still a win over a top five guy. You know, at the end of the day. Yeah, come on. <laughs> so it come puts on. him in line. If, I mean, why Why could you could you feasibly jump Shogun? And say that that's fair on the other and uh, looking at it from the other side, like, little nog, you know, they should have him fight little nog. Truthfully, and and this is one hundred percent true. Joke. And Shogun <laughs> is a goddamn legend, one hundred percent. Is he a top five guy in the UFC? Truthfully, no. In the UFC, no. no. But is he ranked there? Yeah. <laughs> like, All right, so Omar, what what are your thoughts on this? I think Weidman's going to have a, a hell of a lot better time right now with the landscape at 205. I think, we, you know, there, there's, there's too many log jams. You know, I, I'm always a Chris Ryburn fan. I know you got the, the teammate relationship with him, but I'm going to call, you know, spade a spade here. He could win at 185. He could not win at 185. Fuck it. He might fight in New York again, and they might hit him with the hoodoo hex. I don't goddamn know. Haitians were running that fight show. That evening, but I really feel like at 205 he could have he has an easier path to the title, hands down. Anybody you put in front of him, I think he has an easier path to the title, at least an easier path back to like top three contention. Because whenever the hell you know Luke Rockhold figures out what you know, stop squeezing gloves and trying to look like a (laughs) dream. What the fuck was that? um, (laughs) Look how hard I work. Wow, you know what that told me? You have smelly ass hands right now. That's all I could think yeah. of. I was like, yo, your hands have to smell like a gun. Wash your gloves, bro. Fuck, man. I'm not bro, shaking your hands. Think, I think he lost his oh. mind after fucking Demi left Demi him. I, I just think right? he I lost really, his he, shit. Because he's really, he's really kind of been on tilt, as the kids say, ever since Lovato fucking dropped him for I, what you could argue is a no, worse fight. No, yo, Bissing, Imagine? you got to admit, you might not like Bissing, but Bissing, Bissing snatched Luke Rockhold's soul that night. And, like, afterwards, the way he, you know, just, just picture this. This is what I see when I look at Luke Rockhold. I picture him with his arms crossed in the octagon and Bissing tapping him on the shoulder and saying, you're in the octagon. You'll, don't worry, you'll come too. Yeah. <laughs> and Luke yeah. just looked like he just got beat up on the fucking playground. It was it was Arms such crossed. it was so terrible. A lot of bookies lost mad cash on uh, <laughs> on that, <laughs> that payout for what was going on with with how he came in. But I really feel as though at 185 there's a crazy logjam. I mean we're forgetting also that they're going to be adding GSP to the mix. Not saying that he would beat Weidman. Not saying he would give Weidman. You know maybe he could, maybe he could. And that's not the point. My point is that it's another you know uh, weird chink in the armor of trying to set out a, a, a great pass for what Weidman could do. I want to see him at, at 205 because, honestly, a healthy Weidman, a not-sucked-out Weidman, who the fuck knows, man? You know what I mean? I think the time for him sucking weight and being crazy was gone. What he did against Maya is always going to be legendary in my eyes. I think anybody you know who's down with grappling will agree with me. So the two of you guys... 
firmly on that boat, right? Like, come on, man. I guess, yes. you know, sucking out against fucking Damien goddamn Maya. Now that we've seen what Maya can do, I want to see him not not having a cut, being refreshed and revitalized. And I think he puts a real big dent. Does he beat DC? I don't know. Does he beat yeah, Gustafson? You know Potentially. Look at him at 85, and you're like, he's not big enough to fight at 205, but that's because you're looking at him at 85. <laughs> you know, like if yeah. you add 20 pounds to him, he's a lot bigger of a guy. And he's going to be a thick, bro, when, yoked out 205. Bro, let like me tell you something. When he, did, when he did the seminar at Madama, you know, he he was getting ready for his uh, – he was getting ready to get the, uh, the bone chips taken out of his shoulder. Mm. He's a big fucking dude. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, yeah, I, I'm aware. Like, I of looked that. at him. I was like, "Holy shit!" Like, Wyman well, said, and like, yo, that's a, it goes for a lot of these guys, man. Like, they fight, and they look, you think, "Oh, he's 150." But no, they're not. Like, these guys are no. bigger guys. They're you know, and they just look, you know, like, like minutes when they get like strong the looking big. You know, yeah. that's all professional athletes, really. You know, they all look just like fucking. You know, like I've seen NFL tackles in person, and like I can't believe the size of these men. Oh, here we go with the NFL stuff. While again. sizing let's, them let's up, let's not, Chris. Hits, let's, right? I'm not going there. Don't worry. I'm not I'm going, going there, but I will not. reiterate. I, I'm just going to go off of what Omar said in terms of the GSP fight. Just further reiterates my Nate Diaz point, and that's all I'll say about it. <laughs> it's true, and it does. It really is. It does. It's the fight. It's the fight that people want to pay to see. This is the fight business. Not, you know, as much as we love the sport, guys, th- this wouldn't happen if it didn't generate money. That's it. This is why, honestly, it's why I love the sport <laughs> because I don't. I like that they make the fight that makes the most money because the fight that makes the most money is the fight that most people want to see. You know, so it's like it's that simple. I want to see that. Well, I want to see you can, fight more than I want to well, see Tony you could Ferguson say, fight. You could say you could say I'm home been. team. I honestly think Weidman boxes up DC. I think Weidman does to him what, what Jones Bro, did until, in the second fight. I hope one day, for the sake of what you're saying, that Weidman gets the chance, and I hope even more so for the sake of you know me being able to prove you wrong. I hope he gets a chance because DC is probably going to beat his ass if they fight. But <laughs> you know, like, on what basis though? On what basis? Uh, just. On, I'm on being a bowling like, ball with wrestling credentials. Yeah, like DC, you talk about wrestling, bro. Whew. DC will fucking definitely wrestle with Wyman, no problem. But if you and, can't get inside to be able to get But the I'll clinch. say this, Father Time is undefeated. Wyman better work his way up soon if he wants that DC fight, because I don't know that DC is going to be around all that much longer. That's He's got to get a career in. Weidman's not, not that old. Weidman, Weidman's my age. <laughs> Weidman's my age. He ain't old. Oh, he's an old man. He's old that's as my shit. Point. Fuck you. No, I'm, I'm, we're the same age. <laughs> but that's my point. DC, that's a, that's DC my point. is fucking in his 40s. You know? Do you think he's going to stick around for Weidman's climb up the fucking... I don't think so. I don't think he's got no, he's five. Gonna, he's going to move DC's up to heavyweight the where, where the prime is, is like 45. And, and, yes. it's, and, and an even thinner division than light heavyweight. If I'm full of like top five guys, teams. it's full of like a Move couple up. top five guys that he's already beaten. Yeah, really. Like I think the the guy that put you know he put a beating on on Barnett when Barnett was scarier than he even is yeah, now. Right, he hasn't beaten many. He hasn't beaten anyone in the top five in the UFC right now. But but he's proven that he can hang it at heavyweight. But though. but he's but he yeah like I think a guy like Dos Santos he pushes up against the cage, takes him down five rounds in a row. Yeah, you and know, just like beat the shit out of him. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't think Kane's ever coming back. So I think the, that way is clear. I hate to say no. that. That hurt me. That hurt me to fuck. But a guy like Verdum is always dangerous. You know, like there's certain guys that like could beat you on any night at heavyweight. It's and true. that's why they all fought each other seven times. Yeah, and it's heavyweight too. And, and any of those guys put, you know, put something right on the button. It's over. Yeah, like Verdum, mm-hmm. Verdum in my eyes was one time like the heavyweight GOAT. And then all of a sudden he just got, you know, like you look at what he did at when he just won the belt, and then, you know, it was like, yeah, Verdun, man, he's beaten. And also Fedor. training with who he was training with, like I, I got super excited when I heard he was training with Rafael Cordero, I, uh, you know, already an Abu Dhabi legend, 
for Doom, right? Yeah. Already a jujitsu god. And then he's training with arguably one of the best stand up coaches. I'm like, yo, somebody answered a, a prayer that I said at a wishing well a and few it was years fucking, ago, apparently. It was apparent, and his fucking game was fucking yes. at the best. Until so he, he ran chin forward and did a karate. Yeah, like, you know, it goes <laughs> crazy. It's crazy, man. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Like, mental game, bro. That mental game. All right, guys. So we're, we're pretty much all in lockstep that we think that uh, Weidman would do pretty well at yes. light heavyweight as opposed to middleweight. Absolutely. So did you think, we're gonna now, get, honestly, Tommy, did you think that I was going to take that stance on it? You know what? I'm going to tell you why I think that you did. Because you, honestly, as a joke, I know you bust my balls about Weidman, but before we start the show. Am I going to get a compliment show, right here? I, I might fall out of my chair again. Fuck. Before we started this show, years before, when Weidman was volleying for the shot against Anderson Silva, and this is a guarantee, and I will fucking sit for hours and hours and hours and look for this. You told me that you knew Weidman was going to beat Anderson Silva in the first fucking fight that they had. You said it. Joe Mo said it. You knew it. So that's why I did I say it, but I said I said I don't think he deserved the shot when he got the shot, but he has the best chance of beating him, and he probably will. I did say that. I know. I know for a fact that I said it. But you see, but it's I always said that I don't hate Weidman, but I can't fucking be fake about how I actually feel about his skills now. You know what I mean? Like I think that he's not good for that division. He's not going to do well at eighty-five. I don't believe that. You know, and I think that. Well, I think he could be you know, the champ at eighty-five. I think that you talk like you talk like fine, maybe, but you know what? So could Nate at fifty-five because he has. Oh, so God, here we you go. can't say on one <laughs> in one breath that that you know like Wyman deserves a title shot at eighty-five because he could beat Bisping, but then Nate doesn't. He has beat Connor. You know, fucking you're the only one that's not in lockstep is you with yourself. <laughs> oh, how's that for so, how's that for your your compliment towards me? Yeah. You no, know what? Then I'll never. No. But you're right though. No, you, you want to know why, Tommy? Because you know that I I I I joke around, but you know I'm actually like half joking most of the time. I know Wyman's great. He's fucking world. You know, he's fighting the best in the world. These guys, the margin for error is so small. So when I say even, and I won't even say it actually. Fuck that. I'll stick with Weidman. I was going to bring up Ryan Bader. But <laughs> oh, God. Then, and then I and then I almost threw up. I had like acid reflux, so I was like, you know what, I can't. All right, well, but, listen, no, we're, we're going to talk about our, our last topic of the night, and I'm going to throw this out there because of what we've been talking about with the UFC needing stars and the UFC needing ratings. This is something that is pissing me the fuck off. And I don't care. The UFC is giving CM Punk one more goddamn chance to come into the goddamn octagon. They're not giving him a chance. They're giving him... Giving no him who chance. he's fighting, he has, he has no chance. So they're not giving him anything. But that's not Whether the they're point. giving him one or not, he doesn't have one. That's not the point. They're making Why money off of him. And- this- but that's fucking wrong. It's so fucking wrong. Yo, Omar, we need to give so Tommy a wrong. mantra so he can Yo, meditate on it. He's he's really he's stressful as fuck, man. I'm telling you, he's he's cursing yeah. my vibe. Yo, remember? Yo, see, uh, let's book. I wish we had it bookmarked when I started talking about the acceptance of things you cannot change. We're, <laughs> we're, we're taking Tommy through it right now. Like he's you. Good. We absolutely should. just have to accept the fact that it's a money grab, bro. And like, they're going to bury it on like a fucking first fight of a main card. And they're going to sell a couple fucking hundred thousand extra pay-per-views because of it. You telling me that co-main it. should be five rounds though. Cause you know, it's going to be at least no. a co-main. So no, he, like he didn't co-main on his first card, but on a shit card, they'll, they'll have him come up and prop off something crazy. Say they won't want to give him pay-per-view points. Because I'm pretty positive that they probably had to pay him more than they really wanted to on the first go round. So they might have him prop up some, you know, some UFN. He might be on Fight Pass. Who the they'll fuck knows? They'll probably come up with some so fucking. They'll probably come up with some weird way to pay. Here's my problem with this. Okay, here's my problem with this. The only one. When we had 
when we had Eddie Gordon on the very first time, what he said resonated with me forever. I want to get you to agree with Nate after this. Whoever this guy goes against, it's like they're winning the bad lotto. You know why? Because a good amateur will beat this guy. So let's say a bad amateur will beat that guy. Yeah. So let's just say Joe Blow from fucking Idaho comes in. And Jerkimo just Joe from Yakimo? I know him. Yeah. <laughs> and just whips his ass. Worse than Mickey Gall did, because I think Mickey Gall gave him a fucking break. Does that guy honest. get a second UFC fight? <laughs> so now let's say this guy gets a second UFC fight and gets fucking obliterated. The only thing he has on his fucking resume is that he won a UFC fight against CM Punk, who is not a UFC fighter. How does this fucking guy help the UFC other than we're going to give you fucking ratings for one night? He's not helping that's the, the fighter. Only, you're asking a question that doesn't that, – that, and then answering it by saying other than – the one reason why he helps the UFC. You can't say that. Like, that's yeah. the reason. There is no other than. You know, and that's what I'm saying. And, like, Tommy, I agree with you in the fact that, like, you know, and you're, you're talking about, like, uh, what's right and wrong. And, like, yeah, it's wrong. But it's all the way right in the sense that they're going to make money off of it. So that's all that matters. And, and like I said before, that's what they base all, every decision off of. So – Start looking at, like, what's right and wrong based off of that, and you'll have an easier time, and you won't be so stressed. You know what Jaya. else makes money? That's your new mantra. You know what else Jaya. Jaya. You know what it means? <laughs> Fuck me. You know what? No. Bum fights made money. So at no, what that point is right. are they going to just start Absolutely. bringing in bums Absolutely. off the street to fight in the fucking octagon? If at it makes point? money, because they will. And you Tommy, know what? here's it here, and, uh, and I'll fine. do you that. Ready? Ready? Nate Diaz said... Anybody call anybody calling out CM Punk is a bitch. He, that that guy, fuck that guy. He doesn't get to fight me. He was like, if I wanted to go play in the NBA, I'm a star. Could I just go play in the NBA? No, they would fucking laugh me out of the fucking building. He's like, even Stephen Struve, he's six foot ten. They wouldn't let him play in the NBA. You know, and and he's a hundred percent right. Bias. They won't. They they wouldn't let him do it. But the problem is the UFC was searching for opponents for this guy. That's what they're doing again. They're not going to give him a name. What name are they going to give him? What did he fight at Omar? Was it 185? Yeah. Bro, they're going to take they're going to take some cat off the contender series and they're going to try and spin it to make their show, you know, that's what they're going to do. Yeah. That's it. It's a fucking you joke. Have your it's answer. a tragedy. You have your answer. Someone someone that has come up and just trying to put his name in the news is going to call him out. And the UFC is going to like what the guy has, put him in front of a camera and be like, all right, I can fuck with this. And they're going to do the same thing they did with fucking Mickey Gall. On the wannabe. Mickey Gall is actually know, a good for a fighter. fighter. That, there's a difference. I agree. I agree. The thing is, everybody in the UFC, to some degree, is a good fighter besides CM Punk. So no matter who he fights, he's going to get fucking murked. That's it. Now, my That's question it. is... You could put any think... fighter in the UFC at, against Floyd Mayweather, and he's probably going to lose. Floyd's going to lose to that guy, like, at his weight. But here's my any... question to you. Do Fuck you think CM this Punk. is Dana? Do you think this is Dana giving CM Punk a second shot? Or is this WME giving I CM Punk a second I think that we're learning more shot? and more. There's no difference. I think Omar will probably agree. that Yeah, like, mm-hmm. we're learning more and more that it really doesn't matter because Dana, or that Dana doesn't have as much power as he used to. Because he doesn't get to give the advice anymore to the Fertitas, you know, like so he's a pawn. He does, he, he's a pawn. You know, yeah, he's a figurehead. He, this man, this man is he like works the queen for of them. right now. He's he's an, he has he's no an employee. Power. He's an yes. employee. That's what he is. He's as rich as the queen. And Not he has that there's anything wrong with that. Not say. that there's no, anything you know wrong with that. I do employ yes, four hundred million yes, dollars. Sign me up twice, bro. He gets paid a lot of money to take heat. He gets a lot of money to take heat. I he would, has no in a problem. He handles it well. Yeah. And he'll say, you know why I like Dana? Because he'll say, fuck you. I'm doing what I want to do. And he'll own yeah. it. And it won't even be his decision. He'll still own it. So that's a good employee. He, he, Dana's very good at his so job. So where does this you madness can't take stop? That from him. Where does this madness stop? That's what I want to know. It's not. Where does it stop? It's not going to stop. It stops when they get sold again. When they flip it, and they flip it for less money somehow. 
and they're gonna they're gonna do that, and they're gonna get somebody maybe like like the Fertitas, Rich, that give a shit, like the Mark Cuban of MMA, somebody that gives enough of a shit. I don't see. There's no way that they're gonna invest and and get the value back even to cover the nut. I think there's no way they're gonna sell their say for like eight billion dollars. Do you see this happening? Yo, you know what's way? crazy? You know what's crazy? We're talking about like the UFC being sold for such a crazy amount of money. Like that's what the Dodgers would go for. Like that's just one team. You know that goes to show you like yeah, you know, as much money as they make, man. Good call. Yeah. You know? It's small compared to these big sports. They got a long way to go. Long way to go. You know? They're a cheater. But signing signing guys like CM Punk will eventually hurt the brand. It will eventually hurt. I don't know, like what Omar said, I don't know that they're in it for the brand's long term success. There's there's more so, like, like, and he's right. You're probably right. They're going to sell for less than they bought for. I yeah. mean, yeah, like less than they bought for, but they're going to hurt to have made their money. You know, like, they're not exactly. going to sell until they make the back outlay. their profit. And like, yeah, they're going to cover the outlay of cash, but you know what's going to happen is it's going to get sold. And the goodwill on the uh, on the balance sheets, which accounts for like the brand equity, is going to be written down immensely. Because you're going to see, wait a second, we thought it was X, it's X minus Y. There's just no way, you know, the the TV deal that they're shopping around for, I think, is falling on flat ears. They're not, they're not getting the sort of crazy dockets that they're, that they're going to get. We talk about this shit Reebok deal, but who the fuck else is going to offer them cash like that after all this? Name, I name think they're what, trying to go Hall? too big too soon. Fuck them. Yeah. In terms 100%. of the Reebok deal, the Fox deal. And they were. And they were trying to, it was like they were trying to put on daddy's suit. Yeah. When in reality, they should have just been out. Fighting fucking cage And I would love to have somebody that actually has like a background in and having the ability to actually like really get into the finances of it because like it's interesting to me that what, somebody to that see had how maybe potentially are you are you, are you referring to yourself? Absolutely, I am. <laughs> yeah. But but here's what I'm saying: an extensive study in the actual finances of the UFC, like what papers there are to be looked into. Like you maybe have the ability to do that, but you have not done that is what I'm, no, is what I'm referring to. What makes it tough, what, what you're absolutely right about, what makes it tough is that it's still a private company. And it's going to stay yes. a private company. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, you can kind of look at it like sideways. Yeah. You can that, kind of look at it like, like the there's, void. It's like, you know, yeah. when you fucking – Test for metabolites of something like there's usually remnants exactly. of, of masking, if there's something yeah. around it there's something that caused yeah. that yes exactly you know? and like, you know where well, I'm going okay. with that 100 percent like they or why are they taking this deal and not that deal you can infer a couple of things and you know what's funny like I love those long form articles on on bloody elbow shout out to that website they have a couple of these right run the sale happened where it did just that it was a, a crazy lawyer who's like a lawyer slash agent went in and broke down the sale. And then he actually did a piece on um, when it was starting to get, remember when it was rumored a little bit after the sale that the, the earnings were inflated for a little while. Yeah. There was like a, yeah, there was like a quick news cycle and I think it was stamped out. Um, he came back and did that. I'll find those. I'll see if I can find those and I'll post them in the two minute warning site. And then we can probably go from there. Hell, if we can get them on, Shit, I'd be super down with right. about that. My NBA would mean dick because yeah. he's, he's got the, the knowledge, you know, like the in the trenches. Exactly. And it wouldn't mean dick because you would know the right questions to ask. Well, so. yeah, but like, you know, he's, he, it'd be like, you know, me trying to talk to Ari Gold about, about yeah. representation. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's like, all right, guys, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to end this show. <laughs> oh, we got what, a caller. We have a caller. Who do we got there on we the go. line here? Eric in Boston. Sweet. What's up, Eric? What's going on, guys? How are we doing, Eric? You know, what I, you know what I see happening? I see someone like Conor McGregor saying, fuck you, I'm running my own promotion, and basically branching off the UFC where he makes the card and the undercard. <laughs> you know, that's not so far-fetched anymore. It's I, 100%. Crazy. I could see that. Like, if, like, like if, De La Hoya? Especially, like a golden boy? Well, you, you got to think, that's how boxing started. It had one big promotion, and then eventually these fighters said, all right, look at this guy. He's making all the money. I'm getting fucked. 
So you could have someone like, like Connor say, you know what, I can make money off the card, I can put myself in the fight, and I can be doing Floyd numbers off of MMA. Yeah. I, but here's the the one thing that I'll say is I don't know that Connor like as crazy as this is to say in terms of the business world, Connor's very loyal. Do you think that he would just fucking say fuck you to the company that made him what he is? There's a good possibility he will in the long run. It, it, it but makes, I don't know. You know money wise it makes sense. I mean, look at all these fighters that get screwed by the promoters. I mean, look at what Don King did to everyone who fought for him. I mean, look yeah. at this, I mean, and that's true. Once Connor, Connor can't make the UFC money anymore, they'll just say fuck you to Connor, just like he's Tito Ortiz or anybody else. Ran, you know, you can, the list goes on. The minute you're nothing to them, so I agree with that. You know, I mean, I you're think right. I read Connor's first fight in the UFC. He made like sixteen thousand dollars, <laughs> and it wasn't until his last two fights. <laughs> it wasn't to his last two fights when he started breaking over the half a million to you know multi million dollar fights. Yeah, no, you're right. He did it like that. That was a whirlwind, though. Like what Conor did in four years is impressive, man. And the fact that we're even having a conversation about Conor McGregor possibly taking over the UFC and actually saying that you know what, that's not too far off is so impressive in, in terms of what Conor brings to the table. It really well, is. You, you, it speaks volumes. You think, I mean, the way I'm looking at it is the UFC is starting to fizzle. There's really no exciting heavyweights, but you could say that in boxing too. When Thank was you. it really like a, a last exciting boxer and heavyweight? Klitschko, I'm sorry, just doesn't do it. Yeah, right now is the best heavyweight boxing has been in fucking two decades. I agree with that. But it, it's, and it's, and it's still not, even not what great. it used to be. Exactly. Hundred I mean, percent. I would say the last time like boxing was really exciting, and I would probably say the end of heavyweight boxing was when Tyson lost to Lennox Lewis. Then I agree with that, that bro. Boxing. Me and you were in lockstep on that. that I've actually, I've posted that and said that on this show before. Hundred percent. So yeah, man, agree with you there. One hundred percent. I mean, because I grew up as a, a boxing fan, you know. Pay per view. My my grandparents had the ba- you know the black box went over. Pay per view. I have a theory out, on all that. Tyson fights. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, when Tyson yeah, first got out of jail, I was living in Arizona. My parents brought me out to to Vegas to see Tyson fight. Which you know, you know, growing up, I thought Tyson was the man. Yeah, I I've always rooted against Tyson, but that made me watch it just the same. Now now I think Tyson is the man. Like, Lennox Lewis beating Tyson was probably my favorite night in boxing history. I loved Lennox Lewis growing up. So yeah, me and you I aren't mean, aren't in lockstep there. <laughs> we had different nights that night, my friend. I think Tyson would have been different, and his career would have went different if he kept all of Tyson's guys. It's when he yeah. branched away from those guys is when he went downhill and was out of control. Cuss kept I won't under, disagree uh, there. The town was there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, once 100%. once Tony Atlas left, and you know, all the all the management left, everything kind of went downhill, and then Don once Kevin Ferguson took over in his corner. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> my man. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you. I got a question for you. What is it, Eric? Right? You said. Yep. Eric yep. from Boston. Are you a baseball fan by any chance? <laughs> Oh, stealing signals with the uh, What is going on with your boys, yo? Oh, bro, he's, he's a Boston. from Boston. He's a, he's a Red Sox fan. He's a Patriots fan. This is <laughs> this is Tyler's boy. We have Tyler's boy. Yeah, yo, it's North Korea. Up no, there right I figured. Now. I figured, and I, honestly, I could recognize the name from the thread. You know, the threads we've been in a, a few conversations together on online for sure. But I figured, you know, we had Eric from Boston on. So I figured I'd uh, <laughs> I'd take my shots while I had them. Oh, it's man. all right. It's all funny. No, man. it's all in good fun, though. It's great. It's great, except for the whole Apple Watch bullshit. But that's, you know, that's another story. Well, well listen, guys, on, I, hate on Facebook. To, I hate to fucking do this. Eric, I wish you would have called in earlier, but we're going over time right now. Eric, you have an open invitation. Call in any time you want. Um, we're on Mondays normally, as you know, but, um, yes. yeah, we're, we're running over time right now. So 
guys, this this was a great show. Eric, thank you for calling in tonight. Hopefully we get to hey, talk not, to you next not week. Not a problem. Yeah, I'll call in next Hopefully week. We... I was actually, I meant to call in earlier. To, uh, I was going to tell you about the uh, steroids that uh, John Jones was doing. Oh, oh well, yeah. We'll, so. we'll just get to it next week then. That's perfect. Yes. All right. Sounds yes. good, guys. Call in, call in next week at the beginning of the show. Listen, everybody, this was a fun show, guys. The banter gets better and better every week. Um, for oh, good 80K night, Fightwear, good night, good night, Eric. For 80K Fightwear, Black Hole Jiu-Jitsu, Madama Jiu-Jitsu, and Two Minute Warning Sports. Guys, I had a great time tonight. I can't wait to do the video this week. Um, probably going to be looking at Thursday, maybe Friday. If we have to do it the weekend, you know, to uh, to help Chris's schedule, we'll do it. But we're going to do our video cast, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Gentlemen, great show tonight, guys. Great show, guys. Take care. Have a good one. We'll talk to you next week. Eat it.